Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Today I'm going to be reacting to Amit that answers corruption in Bible or Quran. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Auzu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Fa wailu lil ladina yaktubun al kitab bi aydihim. ثم يقولون هذا من عند الله ليشتروا به ثمنا قليلا وويل لهم مما كتبت ايديهم وويل لهم مما يكسبون صدق الله صدق الله العظيم here i have in my hand this bible this is the roman catholic version of the bible the due or reams version of the bible this is an encyclopedia of 73 books seven more than the king james version you use certain technical terms like, like apocrypha which the masses of christendom do not know what is this apocrypha apocrypha means doubtful weak not deserve to be in the book of god as such the protestants threw it out as a fabrication these seven books are thrown out from here now you tell me that this is the word of god the King James Version with his 66 books this was first published in 1611 by order of His Majesty King James whose name is still based today authorized version authorized by who not God Almighty by King James he authorized it not God Almighty now it goes back to the ancient manuscripts I'm told, what is ancient? It says four to six hundred years after Jesus is ancient. Now we have access to the most ancient manuscripts, most ancient. And this translation here, or version, the RSV, the Revised Standard Version, goes to the most ancient manuscripts. They date from two to three hundred years after Jesus. So closer to the source, the more authentic any document would be, closer to the source. This is common sense. If Jesus, in the time of Jesus, if this was written and he had signed it, autographed it, shh, no questions asked. This is two to three hundred years after, this is four to six hundred years after. So they published this translation, published in your own country here, as well as in Britain, Canada, all these countries, simultaneously you produce this Bible. And we are told some glowing tributes are being paid to this translation. It says here, Church of England newspaper says that the finest version which has been produced in the present century, this one, the finest version, the Times, the Times of UK, England says, the most accurate and close rendering of the original. Now, prepare for the shock. I said, prepare for the shock. From these 32 scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 cooperating denominations, they say, yet the King James Version has grave defects. And that these defects are so many and so serious. They are, these are not my words. They are so, they are so many and so serious as to call for revision in the English translation calls for revision and they revised it and in the revision the kingpin of the evangelist the preacher the hot gospeler the bible thumper john 3 16 for god so loved the world in the authorized king james version that he gave his only begotten son the 32 scholars of the highest eminence that by 50 cooperating denominations they threw it out then the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. From the first episode of John, chapter 5, verse 7, where it says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. I said, no, but it's not in my Bible. Is this not the Word of God? In my Bible, it's not there. Why is it not there? Because your scholars, 32 scholars of the highest eminence, Bible scholars, 
backed by 50 cooperating denominations. They say this is a, another fabrication, another interpolation. So they also threw it out without any ceremony. So, so I look up for Mark chapter 16. I see it ends at verse 8. 9 to 20 is missing. Did I take it out? The Muslims took it out? No. 32 scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 cooperating de denominations, they thought it fit that this is another fabrication. And they also threw it out. It's not in my Bible. Therefore, it is not the word of God. But, I pick up another Bible. Look at this. Look at these two. I didn't take them. Look at that. I see back again. It's inside. What was thrown out? The ascension. Now they put it back again. How come? How come? What games are you people playing? Look at this. Back again. This is the 1971 version. Back again. The ordinary people, poor people, they don't know what's going on. What game is being played? Who knows? You read the preface. In the preface we are told that individuals and two church denominations, they stampeded them, they forced them that they should put it back. If not, they're going to preach against this book to say, look, don't buy this, buy the King James Version. Don't buy this, buy the King James, the most up-to-date Bible going to the most ancient manuscripts. No, 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 don't touch that. This is the safer one because it has everything that you want to preach. To catch the fish. It's easier to catch the fish with this than with this. The bait. Ascension is now restored to the text. Says the preface. Why? Not God told them so. By the meantime, they made a net profit of 15 million dollars on this version. Before they could remove it. 15 million. So I said, therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, this is not the word of God. The Quran tells us. Afalayat al dabbarun al Quran. He said, Do they not consider the Quran with care? Walau kana min indi ghayri Allah, la wajadu fihi ikhtilaf an kasira. Had it been from anyone other than Allah, you would have found in it many discrepancies. This is what the Quran says that if this is not the word of God, you will find in any book claiming to be from God, that book will be free from contradictions. Does the glorious Quran exist? in its original and pure form and were the originals in fact burned it is an Osmani Quran to give an example if somebody was shorthand right, right, taking down notes of brother Swagat's speech he mentioned a number of names he was actually mutilating them we forgive him because then it's an Ottoman or something like that when he said saying Usman, he said something about Omar, which sounds most horrible. We are not taking you know, exception to that because this is, you are not used to the, our names. But the person who is taking shorthand and you reproduce that, you'll never be able to connect that you were talking about Usman, the third caliph of Islam, or you were taking about, talking about Omar, the second caliph of Islam. So in that case, if I was going through the notes for publication, Brother Swagat's speech, I would, you expect me to leave it as it is? You know what the way mutilated spelling of Ottoman, this is not Ottoman, it's Usman. So I would say my O-T-H-M-A-N is of Ottoman. I said, look, it's O-S-M-A-N, Osman. Wouldn't I do that? So what happened is this. The books, the Hebrew scripture as well as the Arabic scripture were written originally without the vowel points, without the vowels. Hebrew without vowels, Arabic without vowels. To a native of the language, it was quite easy to understand what was being said. But to an outsider, without the vowels, you can't make the proper pronunciation. Like for example, in English, if it was written without vowels, that the man is sleeping on the bed. The bed will be written B D. You know it should be bed. It's not bid, it's not bod, it's not bad, it's not bud. B D stands for bed. You know, your senses of the language makes you to substitute the vowels in your mind. B D stands short for bed. The Arab knew that and the Jew knew that about his language. 
But as soon as it goes to a foreign nation, the person doesn't know how to pronounce. So different nations, as soon as they started accepting Islam, the way they heard it, they started pronouncing it, they started writing it, mutilating the language. So those variant readings of the various pronunciations, they said, look, this le the revelation was given in the dialect of the Quraysh, the family, the tribe of Muhammad, and that pronunciation should be uh, preserved. So every other pronunciation with different vowel points, it says eliminate them. And that one that was done by Osman is, is preserved in the museum, in the top copy museum in Istanbul. Uh, what I would love is to actually read the original of something. Even in school, um, we have this, we have um, textbooks and there is, is it version one? And they have a revised version. So according to your syllabus, sometimes you change to the new one, sometimes you use the old one. And I'm just starting to think humans have just made that that pattern. So when it comes to the Bible and this thing of removing certain passages, certain verses, I wouldn't want to say much on that today because we'll continue saying the same thing and nothing will change. But I myself would give the I would give myself the advice of actually seeking out to see if I can ever find the original um, Bible that he was showing us here to just go through it. There's nothing wrong with going through the original of something. If there's other originals, go through them as well. There's nothing wrong with that. Just to see the difference with this one that was produced years back and these ones that are produced now. And to see how things change. And I like how he's spoken about shorthand and maybe how they, were, they might have been taking notes. How we people nowadays wouldn't understand, be it the Quran, be it the Bible. And it's a different world. Communication is different. So if you're going to expand those shorthand notes, you would expand them differently than I would. And another person would expand them in a different manner too. So it's something that I always find interesting. But to say there's, there's, there'll always be corruption in something that I don't want to quote. I, I don't even know if I want to quote corruption. But where man is involved, because these texts, both the, the, the Bible and the Quran didn't fall from God down to us, well, we just have to compile them. No, they didn't. And I don't want to point a finger and say, yes, there's corruption here. There's, I'll go with what he said and say, when it comes to interpreting those notes and making it, making them into something that now we can understand, there'll be mistranslation, there'll be this and that, and that human to error, I always say. So that is what I have to say say i don't know about you guys what do you think what are your thoughts about what he said about the bible and what are your thoughts on the quran and yeah if there's something you want me to react to let me know down below drop the name or the link and i'll be more than glad to react to whatever you suggest make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video